Hey there. So if I haven't said thank you for listening in and subscribing to this podcast, let me just say thank you. The reason why we are able to grow and share this information as well as give people support through our programs and through our free content on social media is because of listeners like you. So I just wanted to give you that little boost to say keep on subscribing, keep sharing, keep listening. We appreciate you. So today I have Lexi on the show and I thought that it would be important to bring her on because she is going to give us some tips on how to grow a social media account and specifically Instagram. And the reason why she's focusing on Instagram is because that's where most people are growing their social media nowadays. So I really think that this interview is going to be super helpful for you if you are a wellness entrepreneur, a food blogger, or just anybody who is building a personal brand and is relying on Instagram to get the word out. So I'm really glad to bring Lexi on and she's going to share with you all of her tips on how she got her business built. Lots of love. Listen in. Welcome to the She Heals the World talk show with Dr. S, the place to hear stories of heart-driven women creatively living free. Our episodes highlight conversations and insights that support the values of self-care, creative and personal freedom, slower living, happiness, health and wellness to help you live your absolute best life. To be a part of the movement and join the conversation, step inside our free Facebook group, She Heals the World, and say hello. It brings me great joy to bring you our next episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the She Heals the World talk show today. I am so excited that you're listening. And today I have Lexi from A Crowded Kitchen with us. So Lexi works with her mom, Beth, from Southeast Michigan. And they're full-time bloggers and food photographers with a focus on plant-based cooking and how they feed their family despite multiple dietary differences. Lexi, thanks so much for coming on the show today. How are you? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. We're so excited. Well, I love to like share your story and just hear about how you got started with the Crowded Kitchen. So why don't you just start us off? Okay, yeah, absolutely. So um, so back in about 2012, um, so I was a track and cross country athlete in college. And I was going into my freshman year. And around that same time, I developed all of these just... Well, I I actually had already had them, but I found out that I had all of these food allergies um, that were causing all sorts of issues um, for me. And I had to, you know, I was moving to a different state for college and I was dealing with being a college athlete and changing my diet completely. And it was just a really stressful couple of years trying to figure out what I could eat, what I couldn't eat, um, like how to still eat enough and eat well. And it was, it was a confusing time. So by the time I was a senior, um, or actually junior, so right before my senior year, I felt like I had really kind of started to figure things out. And I decided to start an Instagram account just to kind of document what I was eating as a college athlete with all of these dietary issues. Um, And for a little bit of backstory, so my mom, she coached me in high school. She was our um, track coach. So we've always kind of had this unique relationship. Um, We've always been super close and we've shared a lot of really important life events (laughs) together. And um, we were both very interested in nutrition. So by the time I started this Instagram account, um, you know, it was something that she was also really interested in. And I decided to go abroad for my senior fall, like last minute. And it was right after I had started the Instagram and I kind of wanted to keep it up. Um, So she offered to help me out with it. And she had just started taking an online course for, um, I think it was like superfood nutrition or or something like that, or like raw foods cooking. Uh, So she was already kind of doing all of this and creating some content. So she took it over for me basically right after we started, which was kind of funny. Um, And then when I came back from studying abroad, we were doing it together while I was finishing up college for the last few months. And then um, I got my first job out of college working for the Feed Feed, which is a food media company based in New York. Uh, So I moved there and it it really just ended up being the perfect storm of uh, like it was just a great uh, first job for me. Like I had so much experience. What was your major? I majored in English. Okay. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, I already had this interest in food and media in general. So it was really the perfect first job. And I somehow ended up transitioning in my first year there to, a, you know, into a role where I was actually creating content. So I kind of became um, their photographer and videographer, which was kind of a brand new skill um, that I had to develop. Um, but it was just the perfect opportunity for me to develop those skills. And after I was there for about a year and at the end of that year, I think it was in about July of 20. 2016 or 2017. And I was like, you know what, I think that we can do this full time. So I just kind of took a leap of faith and I moved back home to Michigan and my mom and I uh, started doing it full time together from there. So when you talk about the food allergy that you had, like, what were some of the symptoms you were experiencing? Like, was this a food allergy, like your throat was closing? And like, if you went to the allergist, like he would have done the skin prick test and found those kind of sensitivities? Or was this more like, I just don't feel good when I eat certain meals and I have to figure out how to overcome that? So it was a little bit of all of those things. Um, I've had major issues at, like pretty much since I was a child and they could never quite figure out what was wrong. Um, you know, I had a lot of digestive issues, obviously the main symptom. And then I also had a lot of uh, weird skin things like eczema and you know, rashes and all sorts of annoying things. And um, yeah, so I ended up going to a holistic doctor because I, you know, I went to all sorts of other doctors and nobody could give me a straight answer. And there was really no solution, which is, I was just looking for something to make it better because none of the traditional you know, creams or like the pill, nothing was working. Um, so I ended up going to somebody who had me do an elimination diet. And that's when we were able to really figure out which foods were triggering these symptoms. And it also turned out that my mom had pretty much all of the exact same issues. Mm -hmm. um, she has suffered, she did suffer from like severe migraines for years and years and she, no, nothing worked um, mm -hmm. to, to make them better until she made these dietary changes. So that was definitely transformative for both of us. Um, I really just feel like I'm a different person than I was when I was, you know, eating things that just clearly didn't agree with me so yeah so what what were some of the big findings so we are both allergic to gluten um we mm -hmm. neither of us have celiac disease which is interesting and it, you know this is one of those touchy subjects because i think you know, a lot of people think that gluten-free is this fad and and if you don't have celiac disease and you, you know there's no reason you shouldn't be gluten-free mm -hmm. or you should but like we both of us have, just have severe issues when we eat it so you know for us like it can be hard to explain to somebody that you know we don't have celiac disease but it really just does not work for us um so we both cut out gluten and dairy was another huge one for both of us um and then eventually we both became mostly vegan actually so we also cut out meat but um that was kind of the first step for both of us so um, when you decided to start the Instagram account, like how soon after did it actually become a business? So that first year that we were doing it, um, it so I mentioned earlier that my mom was, ended up taking these online courses just because she was interested in nutrition and she was interested in learning more about um, vegan cooking and raw foods and all sorts of things like that. So she was taking these courses that also kind of coincided with what we were creating. Um, for our page and we also took like a basic photography course so we could understand our camera um and so that first year was really just you know sharing whatever we wanted just things that we were eating we didn't really share recipes um just photos and it's, it's hilarious now because we look back and we're like you know we thought these photos were amazing and now we're <laughs> so embarrassed by them <laughs> but um so that first year was really just just for fun, just a hobby. We had no intention of turning it into a business. And then um, that next year, so about a year and a half after we started, we got our first sponsored um, sponsored post. That was pretty uh -huh. exciting. That was in December of that year um, while I was working for Feed Feed. And uh, yeah, from there, it, it really, it grew quite slowly, um, especially since I had a full-time job. We really didn't have time to develop the business. Um, and then once I quit my job, obviously we were able to really refocus solely on the business, but it, it honestly took 
took another full year, I would say, to really figure out what our strategy was, what we were doing. Um, just there's a lot that goes into it that I just don't expect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you guys are funded by sponsorships now, right? Yep. So we have, uh, that's, I would say is currently the bulk of our business. Um, we do quite a bit of, of, uh, sponsored work or I like to phrase it more as just partnering with brands, um, mm -hmm. you know, that we really actually use and enjoy and think that our audience would enjoy. And then we also do quite a bit of freelance work for brands. So we, we actually do freelance photography and recipe development, um, for brands. You know, we don't share the content. It's just for their marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. And then we also have our website, which we, has recently become more of a focus for us. Uh, so we're trying to grow that as well. Beautiful, beautiful. So I know we all wish that this would have been like a smooth journey, but everybody has challenges once they decide to become an entrepreneur. So what have been some of the hurdles that you had to overcome while you were building? Yeah, absolutely, a lot a lot of challenges. Um, so in, the, in this first year that we went full time, uh, which was almost two years ago now, you know, I, I moved, it was only a year, I was only a year out of college. I decided to just totally change everything and move back home to Michigan, moved in with my parents, with my now husband. So we were all living there together. And that whole year was, <laughs> it actually, it was great. I mean, I'm really close with my parents and they're obviously, you know, I work with my mom, but right. um, it was, it was actually a great experience, but, um, it was, it was a really challenging year. Um, just to figure out how to do things. I mean, there is so much that goes into this, a huge learning curve, especially with photography and working with brands and building a website. And it was also just hard to uh, motivate myself a little bit working from home. You know, it, it's not easy all the time. Um, and I kind of, I think sometimes I, I took it for granted a bit too much. <laughs> right. um, so now I, I think this year we've really gotten things under control a lot, but we didn't really have a set schedule. So it was kind of, you know, we'd, we'd wake up, I'd come downstairs and we'd be like, hmm, what should we do today? And, you know, we just weren't that productive and we didn't really have a plan. Yeah. So that, that was a big challenge just the first year, just figuring everything out. And then this year we kind of, I would, I'd say we're in, we're in phase two now of development of developing our business. And Phase two involved completely redoing our entire website from scratch. Um, like I said before, our website was really never a focus before. It was really more just on the photography and the social media side of things. But we really want to focus on our website going forward. And I had no idea what I was doing. So I spent, I think, took like two and a half months to do that. Um, and that was just, I think every day, it was just a new a new challenge, figuring something out that I just had no idea what I was doing. And once it was up, it was just like the best thing in the world. Um, it made a few, <laughs> but just, yeah, it's just, you know, you're figuring things out on your own. And like, I, I probably could have hired somebody to help me, but it's, ex it's expensive. And I, I, you know, I to, to work on it on my own and I've developed a lot of skills, but it's, it's just a lot of small frustrations and, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you maintain the site. You guys maintain it on your own. Yes. Yeah. We do all of it on our own. I, I built our new site. Um, well, I didn't build it from scratch. I used a template, but um, <laughs> <laughs> that definitely did not learn how to do that. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was a big challenge. So. Yeah. So I guess along with that, other than learning web design, <laughs> yeah. what was um, like your greatest win so far? So just recently, uh, a couple of months ago, actually while I was building the new website, uh, I just kind of realized that we had gotten to a point where, you know, even with my mom working, you know, we have two people, we, it's a lot, you know, we're doing a lot more work than just one person could do. But even then we just had so much to do that we were like, we need to just, we need to take the next step. And if we're going to grow, we need to invest in our brand and we need to invest in hiring somebody that's really going to help us take that, take us to the next level. Um, so we decided to bring on actually one of my best friends from college. Um, and she just started full time last Monday. And that was such an exciting thing for me. I, I remember like when I first talked to my friend Lizzie about joining us, I just got off the phone and I was just like, wow, I just cannot believe that our business has grown enough to be able to do this and to be able to grow it in this huge way. Um, yeah. 
So that was probably, that was just a cool moment to, to see how far it's come and to really be able to sit down and say like, look, we, we really want to take this to the next level. We want this to be, um, you know, a real company and a real brand and we want to grow our team. So that was pretty exciting. Yeah, congratulations. I know that that is such a nerve wracking thing for some people where they're like, oh my gosh, I now have a full time salary that I have to make sure is covered. Yeah. Um, but it also like lights the fire under folks as well. Kind of like you said, like you're relishing and like really happy that you guys got this far. But it's also like, okay, this is a company and we're growing this into a company. And this was a huge step in doing that. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Congratulations on that shift. Thank you. So I know you got some tips for us because I know as people were listening and they were probably taking notes about how quickly you were able to grow your business and your brand and now be able to turn it into a company that is hiring people and, and starting to look at the next level. What can you, um, what advice can you give our audience when it comes to growing an Instagram account soup to nuts and why does it even matter? Yeah, so we, okay, so if I think back a couple of years ago when we started Instagram, first of all, it was a very different um, platform. It was, mm -hmm. uh, the algorithm was completely different and we were lucky in a sense to have been a part of it at a time where it was growing quickly. And we had a period where I think we gained you know, 20,000 followers within a couple of months or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so at that point, when we really started taking this seriously and approached approached it more as a business I think we were around 30,000 followers and at that point we really had to sit down and, and think about like okay how are we growing like what what are we doing right that's helping us grow and like how can we continue to do this going forward so our main focus and I think that this is important for anyone who's trying to grow on social media is really focusing on the quality of your content um mm -hmm. I think especially in the food industry and the food world on, on social media there are so there's a lot you know there are so many people that are trying to make it and it's really hard to differentiate yourself um and we did that through photography and it was it took a lot of time I mean it's a complete skill that we had to learn and we had to invest in a good camera and equipment and we had to take some courses and and really just a lot of trial and error like it really took us two years to to be doing it well, I guess. Um, but that is what really made a difference for us. And once we really got our photography style sorted out, I think that's when we started to continuously grow. And we've been growing ever since, which we're very fortunate about. But it's a, it's a lot of work. And I think that anybody going into it should know that you it's really hard to grow if you're just you know, snapping a photo on your iPhone once a week. Um, like you should not expect growth immediately because it's really a lot a lot of hard work that you might not expect um so that's one thing um another thing i think it's really important to figure out what it is that you want to share on social media and really stay true to yourself um that was something we struggled with quite a bit in the early years or year um mm. i think we kind of got carried along this wave of you know the trends on instagram and really just trying to create content that fit in with those trends and that just wasn't us and once we started really developing our own style and our own voice that's actually when we started to grow more um with you because then you're more enthusiastic about the content that you're promoting and it just makes a big difference and we, we went through that again a couple of months ago um trying to figure out you know what we wanted our voice to be in this weird food blogger community and um you know for us I, some people are amazing at writing these like beautiful long captions that tell stories that's just not me I, I can't do that and I know that people really love reading that stuff but like if, if, if I don't feel good writing that you know I shouldn't be doing that right. um, so we're trying to now shift our focus more towards um, a bit of a bit more of like an educational standpoint. Um, so sharing more about nutrition or more about um, the food industry and sustainability and um, seasonal produce. And that has worked really well for us because that's what we feel comfortable with. Um, so I really like just staying true to what you 
are most interested in and what you want. Like there are definitely other people out there that are interested in those same things. So yeah, in the right audience. Well, let me ask you a question with that, because um, it's interesting when you think about like where your income comes from, because your income doesn't necessarily come from like individual consumers. It comes more from the brands. And so I'm wondering from like a content perspective, do you find yourself kind of gearing the content more towards attracting brands or is it more about attracting consumers so that brands can then see you guys are able to build um, a pretty solid consumer base and that'll give them the confidence to sign on board? Right. Yeah, we definitely try to focus on um, on our readers and what they might be looking for in a blog um, Mm -hmm. and what questions they might want answered. Um, I mean, I think since we focus on a lot of recipe content, it's pretty easy to do that because we try to just write our posts to be as helpful as possible about, you know, maybe a certain technique for cooking or like how to make this vegan, you know? So I think in that way, it's really easy to cater towards an audience. Um, I would say though, that we really try to um, focus our photography on what a brand might be looking for Mm. because um, that has what, that is what has set us apart um, when we've gotten a brand partnerships or um, or freelance work is our photography. So we, we definitely try to focus on that. And that's, um, and it's, and when we're pitching brands, that's really something we try to focus on. You know, we have a, a portfolio that we send over showing our, our work, past work with brands. And um, yeah, I think it's important to cater mostly towards your readers um, in your writing style because ultimately, that's who you're writing for. Um, Yeah. Plus it's, and when working with brands, that's a really tough thing to navigate um, when you're new to it. And it was hard for us at first to figure out how to talk about a brand to our audience without, you know, sounding artificial. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So that's a, that's a skill. (laughs) (laughs) A skill that must be learned. Yes. Yeah, that I still am not sure that I am great at, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just try to, we also try to include um, other product recommendations in our regular blog posts because the brands that we work with are all brands that we actually use and the products that we recommend in other posts are also products that we use, even though we're not necessarily working with a brand. So we, we just try to approach it from the sense that we're being helpful to somebody who's looking for um, you know, a vegan cheese option or something. Cause that's not yeah. always something that people know. So, yeah. Right. Well, I have one more question before, uh, cause I know you have some more like advice, but I have to get this one in because I feel like this has been something everybody struggles with and it is content. And when I say content, I kind of mean more like coming up with ideas for content and mm-hmm. mapping it out. Um, you know, most people when they are starting their business, just like you, like they didn't go to school for journalism. So like they don't know how to create like a media calendar or anything like that, that like helps them really figure out like what content should I post when and why is it important. And so I'm just wondering if you had any um, hurdles with that and like what you did to overcome it or what works for you. Absolutely. Yeah, that is another thing that took us a full two years, I think, to really figure out. Um, Mm -hmm. With food, it's a little bit easier because you're often going around seasonal ingredients or holidays. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that it's really important to plan out content around those around those things. Um, But in the first year that we were doing this full time, we were still on this schedule where we would be shooting something in the morning and getting it up on the computer and editing the photos and posting it that afternoon. And that was (laughs) terrible. (laughs) strategy (laughs) really not fun um yeah so it it really took us quite a while to figure out um our schedule and one thing that helped I know this isn't like a relevant situation for everybody but I I moved out I bought my own house in November um Mm -hmm. and that really helped separate my work from my life because we do all of our photo shoots and cooking at my mom's house um so now that's kind of like my office you know I go there three days a week. And then I work from my house the other two days. And so now we sit down at the beginning of every month and we plan out the entire month's worth of content. Um, right now, actually, I think we already have almost through the end of August planned out. And 
And then we, you know, on those three days that we work together, we get like four or five shoots done because we have to be ahead and we have to make sure that, you know, July 4th is next week. We we're posting July 4th recipes now, or like a week ago. Um, we have to have that content ready. So it's really important to sit down and plan out ahead of time. And there are a lot of easy ways to do that. Um, you know, I use Pinterest a lot as a source of inspiration mm -hmm. uh, for recipes. And I also use, I actually, um, feed feed, which is shout out to my, <laughs> um, I don't know if you're familiar with their website, but, um, they basically sort recipes by, um, ingredients or category, which is really helpful for, you know, say that you have a lot of zucchini or something, you can search all of the zucchini recipes. So we find our inspiration just by, you know, looking at seasonal ingredients really and looking at recipes that we can make our own um, especially since we're vegan and gluten-free it's pretty easy to do that actually because you know we take something like mac and cheese and we're like all right how can we make this our own and how can we make this vegan so that's how we plan out a lot of our content yeah um, yeah like I said it's easier for food but we we're also trying to incorporate more lifestyle slash informative material um into our blog content and by that we we're, we're literally planning out like six months ahead like every other week we're going to do a post on photography and let's plan out those concepts now because those can take a lot of time to put together yeah yeah so really planning ahead is key for sure and and actually getting things done ahead of time is the most wow. important. <laughs> yeah super super helpful i'm sure you saved so many people, so much time with that one tip. So thank you. <laughs> Hopefully they don't go through two years of doing what I did. <laughs> Another thing I would suggest is posting regularly. And this kind of goes hand in hand with making sure you always have content. Um, because it was hard for us to post regularly when we were scrambling to get things done the day of. Uh, so yeah, having a content calendar and then actually sticking to that um, it really makes a big difference when in terms of growing Instagram followers because with the whole algorithm, you know, I can't claim to understand how it works, but we have seen that we definitely grow when we're posting every single day. Um, we're posting Instagram stories, we're using hashtags, um, pretty much following all of the, not rules of Instagram, but you know, doing a little bit of everything that they offer because I think that's important to the algorithm. Yeah. Um, and it, I mean, I'm definitely an advocate of taking time off when you need to. And I think that's totally fine. But if you don't have a plan and if you're not planning out content ahead of time, it's going to be impossible to keep up with the algorithm and understanding that. So mm. that's, yeah, that's a big tip for us. And then also just interacting with other people. It, I mean, it's so funny because we, we just, we really actually have all of these Instagram friends you know, that we've made, <laughs> um, which is such a strange thing. And I really hope to, meet, we actually have met some of them before, but you know, hopefully we can meet more in the future. <laughs> uh, but we've really built this little online community um, and bloggers, especially people in the food blogging world are so supportive and so nice. And also really open to helping out and answering questions. And we've, yeah, we've had a lot of really great experiences meeting people. And that has definitely, it's helped us um, keep things, you know, exciting on Instagram. And yeah, we don't dread logging on every day because we actually enjoy talking to these people and seeing their content. And it's just built a really nice community. Mm, beautiful. Well, Lexi, thank you so much for sharing those tips. I am quite sure that they have saved many of our women entrepreneur listeners a lot of time and a lot of stress. So we really appreciate you. So looking back on your business, if you could give your 10 year younger self any piece of advice, what would it be? I would definitely tell myself to relax a little bit more. Um, I don't I don't feel that I really was able to fully enjoy my college experience because I was always so stressed about the future and, and just what was going on with all of my dietary issues. And it all worked out totally fine. Um, so to just pursue my passions a little bit more, I think would have been really helpful. And, and it probably would have led me to this career path even sooner, which would have been nice because that uh, second semester of my senior year was a little stressful trying to, <laughs> trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. 
<laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but definitely just uh, pursuing my passions and um, having more hobbies, I guess, to figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah, beautiful. How can everybody find you, Lexi, if they want to support you, share your work? Let's drop your links here. <laughs> All right. So we are on Instagram as crowded underscore kitchen. And that's kind of where our uh, the bulk of our audience currently is. And then our website is just crowdedkitchen.com. And that's where all of our recipes and photography, tutorials, etc. everything is on there. So, yeah. Beautiful. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Lexi. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Well, there you have it. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. And as always, for more resources, as you continue to live out your beautiful mission of healing the world and grow your beautiful business, you can head to www.shehealstheworld.com forward slash freebie to see what new resources I have in store for you. Thanks for listening. Tell a friend. And I can't wait to see you at the next episode.